RF man here. Um, today I'm going to continue with part two of my four part video on super heterodyne receivers. If you haven't watched part one yet, I would suggest to go back and watch part one, which focuses on RF amplifiers. And today for part two, we're going to focus on the frequency mixer. So just a quick review. We went through the main components of the super heterodyne receiver. Um, we talked about the RF filter. We demonstrated the RF amplifier. And today we're going to be talking about the frequency mixer and how that works with a local oscillator. So in brief, we have our mixer here. And we have an RF signal coming in from our antenna and we have a local oscillator and then we have what's called an intermediate frequency on the output and we do have some conversion loss which we'll see when we demonstrate some of these circuits um, so real brief okay we have two signals RF signals so let's say this is our RF signal and in my case I'm using 26 megahertz so that's the input signal here then we have the frequency of the local oscillator, okay? And in my case, again, I'm using 10 megahertz, okay? So here's RF in, here's the local oscillator. Now what happens when we mix the frequencies? Well, we get a waveform similar to this, okay, which combines the two waveforms together. So we can see that on the oscilloscope. And then when we look at it on the spectrum analyzer, and in my case, I'm using the FFT function of the scope. Um, scopes are normally uh, time domain, but with the FFT function, fast Fourier transformation, you can look at it in the frequency domain. So we can actually look at the frequency components. So, so what happens with a mixer? Okay, we basically have the sum and the difference of these two frequencies. So here we see... Okay, it says F1 minus F2. So in my case, I'm using 26 megahertz, B minus 10 megahertz. So this would be 16 megahertz. Okay, and on the other side, we have F1 plus F2. So again, 26 megahertz plus 10 megahertz would be 36 megahertz. Okay, so these are the two frequency components that we're interested in that are generated by the mixer. Now there are other harmonics in there as well, um, but generally with the uh, intermediate frequency, we take the RF signal F1 minus the oscillator frequency F2. So in my case, I'm interested in 16 megahertz. So there's a lot of different types um, of, of mixers. There are active mixers which use transistors okay here's a few examples that use a bipolar transistor something with the correct frequency range so you can use a small signal rf transistor like an mps h10 or something equivalent okay you can also use a jfet so here's some examples of jfets okay again this is an active mixer and then there's something called a diode ring mixer, okay? And this is a passive mixer. And we're also going to demonstrate how this circuit works as well. So let's start with the, the transistor circuit. Um, I built a couple of these. Uh, the one I found that works fairly well is, is this topology where you're taking the RF frequency and the low frequency and you're combining it. So you have some DC blocking here because you have your bias voltage. And then we use two inductors just to provide some isolation between the two signals. And then we take the output here on the collector and we see the frequency that's mixed there. Okay, and I'm, again, I'm just using a small RF transistor. I'm driving it with 12 volts. So before we actually look at the waveforms, let's uh, just take a quick look at the circuit. 
bear with me here while I adjust my, my camera so we get a better view of things. Okay, so this is the mixing circuit that I just mentioned. Um, you can see we have basically a, a, a voltage divider that we use to bias the transistor. And we have a small RF choke here. And then we have our input circuitry here, which are two blocking capacitors and two inductors. So that's what the circuit looks like. Let me get a little closer look at it from overhead. Okay, pretty simple. Now, what do the waveforms look like? Okay, let's go and take a look at the waveforms on the scope. Okay, and you can see we've got two different frequencies being mixed together here. Okay, and we're just looking at the waveform on the scope. Okay, if we put it in FFT mode, now we, we can actually look at the frequency domain. So let's just do some uh, quick adjustments here. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and I'm using my cursors, okay, to be able to measure the frequency of, of each of these. And what are we looking for? Well, we said we have the sum and the difference, right? So the difference is 16 megahertz. The sum would be 36 megahertz. Okay, so if we put our cursors back on and we change this over to frequency. Okay, I have one cursor here that's reading 16 megahertz, so 26 minus 10 is 16. This is the one we're gonna use in the mixer for our IF frequency. Generally, you take the difference, but there could be cases where you take the sum. Okay, and here's the 36 megahertz right here, 26 plus 10. So these are my two frequency components. Okay, now what you see here are additional harmonics and we could identify each of these right we're going to have the 26 megahertz fundamental we're going to have the the uh, 10 megahertz here fundamental okay then we'll have harmonics generated from there right each one's going to have a second harmonic third harmonic and we can look at the whole spectrum uh, but i really don't want to make it that confusing so you know here we basically said we have the sum here and the difference here of the two frequencies that we're using and you can see those on the function generator here 26 megahertz and 10 megahertz so so that's what it looks like takes the sum of the difference and then we can use a low pass filter or a band pass filter to filter out the desired frequency for our IF and we're actually going to do that as we look at some of the other topologies here so I'm gonna I'm gonna set up a couple of more circuits and I'll be back and we'll talk about those. All right, so now I'm back, and the next topic would be not what we would call an active mixer, but a passive mixer, and a very popular design that's available in either prepackaged form or available with. Uh, discrete components is called the double balance diode ring. So you can see on the input side we have an input transformer, on the output side we have an output transformer, and then we have a diode ring. So during the positive amplitude of the sine wave we conduct one pair of diodes, and then during the negative transition of the sine wave we conduct the other pair of diodes and then those are basically mixed with the RF signal here, and we take the intermediate frequency here. Now we have the same situation, okay? It takes the product and the sum, okay? So still using 26 megahertz and 10 megahertz, so we'll be looking for the, the uh, difference, which is 16 megahertz, and the sum, which is 36 megahertz. And then typically what you would have, in, in my case, I'm using F1 minus F2, 16 megahertz. I would have a bandpass filter tuned to 16 megahertz. And I'm going to demonstrate that as we move on with the video. Now, 
One interesting point here is you can actually buy these already made up, okay? Mini circuits is a very good source for all types of RF circuits, combiners and transformers and mixers and dividers, etc. And this particular one, this is the ADE-1H Plus. And this is good up to 500 megahertz. And we can use this um, with a current. IF current of 40 milliamps and a total power dissipation of RF power of 200 milliwatts. Okay, so it's very simple to use. Okay, we put a local oscillator, we connect onto pin 6 here, the RF, we connect on pin 3, which is here, and we take the IF out of 2. All the other pins are grounded. So it's a very simple circuit to use and it provides excellent results so let's just scroll down and look at the electrical schematic and you can see it's the same schematic as I just showed you so later on in the video I'm going to show you another version of this which I built on a perforated board uh, which can actually handle much higher amounts of RF power uh, but this is the basic topology and the key element here is the diode ring. So that's what it looks like. So let's take a look at the actual circuit itself. Again, just bear with me as I adjust my, my camera and get this in the field of view. Okay, there we are. So as we said, we apply the RF signal here, the local oscillator here, and then we take the IF out here. So let's just go ahead and connect up the, the scope probe and take a look at what the waveform looks like. Okay, so let me just reposition. That's what our combined waveform looks like with the two frequencies mixed together. Okay, if we take a look at the spectrum, let's put the scope in FFT mode here. Okay, make some, some quick adjustments. There we go. Okay. Again, I'm using my cursors. So you can see the, the actual frequency measurements. Okay. So here's the first cursor. You see we're at 16 megahertz. So again, it's the difference between the two frequencies, 26 minus 10 is 16. And here we're at 36 megahertz. Okay, so again, it's the RF signal, 26 megahertz plus the local oscillator, 10 megahertz. And you can see the, the advantage here is we get a lot less conversion loss, okay, that these peaks are much higher. Um, we're still picking up one of the fundamental frequencies, but in this case, it would be very easy to filter out either the 16 megahertz or the 36 megahertz. And when we actually look at this, the version that I built, we're gonna apply a low pass filter or a band pass filter and take a look at the results. In this case, I'll be using a band pass filter. Okay, so now I'm back. And we're going to demonstrate the double balance diode ring. And this is the version that I built that has a higher RF power rating. So the schematic is basically the same. And we've got transformer on the input, transformer on the output. Both transformers are center tapped on the second winding. And we'll briefly discuss how I did that and different options or alternatives for building the circuit. So here's one version 
of the transformer. And in this one, I used basically a trifle wound technique. So I took three wires, I twisted them together as evenly as I could, and I wrapped them around the toroid. And then I separated the wires to follow the schematic that you've seen on the screen there. Okay, you see here, one of them is center tapped, right? And then one's the input, one's the output. Um, so that's one, one method, okay, is use a trifle wound coil. Now, that this toroid is material 43, okay? Uh, other materials will work as well, depending on the frequency. Okay, and then on the version that I built, which is here, you can see, I'll just reconnect my scope probe. Okay, I used a little smaller toroids here. Here's my diode ring in the middle. And I made one winding for the input and then a second winding, which is center tap. And the same on this side as well. Um, this side is for the RF signal, this side is for the local oscillator. Okay, so that's what the circuit looks like. Take a little closer look at it. Now if we go back to the waveforms, okay, the waveform looks essentially the same as it did in the mini circuits design. Um, so I'm not going to show that. But here we see again the fundamental frequency okay in the version I made and then we see the difference between the two and the sum so again we have our 16 megahertz and our 36 megahertz so what do we do with this okay well we can typically filter out one of the frequencies and like I said I typically use the RF minus the local oscillator so 26 minus minus 10 um, would be 16 and this if I can get this in the camera view this is what the bandpass filter looks like it's a Chevy Chev filter it's a fifth order so there's five elements and if you're interested in how to design these filters you can go back to my video on low pass filters and take a look at the LC software that I use and it discusses how to design filters, how to test filters, etc. But this is the filter we'll be using along with the mixer, and you'll see how we're able to separate the one frequency and then how we actually tune the set the super heterodyne. So let me set this up and we'll come back in a minute. Alright, so now I have the mixer set up with the 16 megahertz bandpass filter. And we're going to take a look at the waveform on the scope and you can see that I'm able to filter out all frequencies except the RF frequency 26 megahertz minus the local oscillator frequency of 10 megahertz so 16 megahertz and you can see that with the cursor here so there I'm able to tune out the 16 megahertz signal so now how do we actually tune a separate a super heterodyne right well, let's say we change the RF signal. Let's say now the desired frequency that I want to receive is not 26 megahertz, but 36 megahertz. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that up. Okay. And you can see the frequency just shifts right off the screen there. Um, but if you look at my function generator, you can see I changed the frequency to 36 megahertz. So, so to tune in, Okay, we have to change the frequency of our local oscillator. And what do we have to change that to? We have to change it to 20 megahertz. Okay, so now we have 36 minus 20 is 16. And what do we see that reappears here? We see our IF frequency. So that's how we tune to different input frequencies by adjusting the local oscillator. So the difference is always 16 megahertz. Okay, now that's the frequencies I'm using for this particular example, but there are other frequencies used, okay, for different bands, and you could do some research on that. There's much lower frequencies that are used and higher frequencies um, for microwave systems, etc. But these are the two frequencies that I elected to use. So there you can see that we're still tuning that signal. 
Okay, and what would we do with that? Well, after we have that, right, it would be a modulated signal. We would go back to our example here. Okay, now that we've, uh, we've selected the frequency, right? Okay, so, so we mix the two frequencies. We adjusted our low oscillator. We used a bandpass filter to separate just the IF frequency, which is that 16 megahertz. And if we were receiving a signal, it would be modulated. So we would amplify it, demodulate it, and then amplify it again to drive a speaker. So that's basically how the superheterodyne works. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about frequency multipliers and then frequency dividers for the remaining two parts. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. RF man.